Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angel and today I'm actually sharing some coastal and nautical decor. For this project, I'm just using a glass jar. This is just one that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm giving it two coats of my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Now I wanted this jar to look like it had an octopus kind of hanging around the whole thing. So I'm just taking some of my air dry clay and I'm starting out by making the octopus head first. I'm leaving it a little thicker and then I'm just using some of my Gorilla Glue gel super glue to attach the head and then I'm taking some more of my air dry clay and I'm gonna start rolling out eight legs and I wanted them all to be about the same size so I just cut the ends off. Before I start gluing my legs on to the jar I did grab a little bowl of water and a small paintbrush so as I'm gluing my legs in the position that I want them once I get those legs on there and glued on there nicely then I'm gonna go back in with that paintbrush and a little bit of water and I'm gonna brush it over the little crease between the leg and the head and this is actually gonna blend your clay together really nicely and as I was gluing my legs on to the jar the clay did start to dry a little bit so I also used my brush and the water to help soften and dampen the clay again so that I could shape it and if there were any cracks anywhere I would also go back in with that water and the paintbrush to smooth out those cracks. So of course you'll want to work as quickly as possible gluing those legs onto here but like I said you can always use the water to help soften it again. Once I had all my legs glued down and shape the way I wanted them. I just used the bottom of my paintbrush to make the eyes on the octopus and then I also just kind of tapped over the head and all the legs to make a texture for the octopus. I waited for the clay to completely dry for about 24 hours and then I went back in and painted over the octopus with that same plaster color paint and then I went in with some of my European gold rub and buff and just went over the octopus. This next project is super easy and it went really quickly, but I grabbed this little wood round from Dollar Tree and then I picked up some of these little driftwood sticks to make a candle holder. So I'm starting out by just using some of my Gorilla hot glue and I'm gluing these little sticks all the way around this circle just in a straight line for this first row. And then once I had the first row done, I kind of went back in with some random sticks. Some of them weren't even whole pieces and I just kind of glued them randomly over this. And then all I had to do was add a Dollar Tree LED candle to this or you could use this as a little planter. For this project, I used a Dollar Tree wood plank and as you can see, I've gone ahead and stained this with some of my antiquing wax and a baby wipe. Then once that was all dry, I went around all the edges with a candle just to get some wax in random places and just around the edge before painting this with two coats of my white chalk paint. And once my paint was completely dry, then I just took this little Cricut tool and scraped around the edges and the random places that I put any of that candle wax. 
Then I just grabbed one of these carbon papers. I got a pack of these from Amazon and I have these linked in my storefront, but I'm gonna use this carbon paper with this little continuous line drawing of a lighthouse that I just traced out from Google. So I'm gonna tape both of those pieces down to my board and then I'm using this little tool that came with my carbon paper to just trace over all the lines. I did end up leaving off that bottom portion you can see here once I remove the carbon paper it just left this imprint on the wood board and then I went over everything with one of my sharpies then I wanted to add a little bit of subtle color to this lighthouse so I'm gonna do a watercolor just using some water and some watered down blue paint what I did was just add water where I wanted the color and then I dipped my brush into the watered down acrylic paint then I was able to just kind of spread that using the water then after I let that darker blue color dry a little bit I went back in with a little more water over it and then I dipped my brush into the light blue color to kind of blend those together now I also wanted to pair this with something else and my good friend Kathy gave me the idea to use one of these Dollar Tree fish and cut the head and the tail off so I just used my miter box saw and I I cut that center piece out and I'm only going to be using the head and the tail. So I just kind of dry brushed some of my white paint over top of that fish. And then I'm going to be using some of these half wood beads. This is the idea that she gave me and I thought it was super cute. So I'm again using one of those Dollar Tree wood planks as the backing for this. And then for the center of my fish, I just used those half wood beads. And I just used some wood glue to glue all of those down to that Dollar Tree plank. I've also added the link to Kathy's blog in my description box below. Now this project is actually a very different kind of beachy project. It's definitely not your typical one, but I found this gorgeous print on Etsy of a lady holding a oyster shell. And I just had the idea to add some pearls to this to make it kind of a 3D print. So I will have this print link below for you to the Etsy store, but I grabbed some pearls from Dollar tree and I'm also just going to be using some white sewing thread and two needles. Now you'll need to tie a needle at each end of your piece of thread. Just make sure it is longer than you think you're going to want it. Now I had my photo printed off at Walgreens at an 11 by 14 on regular photo paper, but to make it a little sturdier, I did attach it to a piece of Dollar Tree poster board. Now I wanted to make this photo look like the lady has a pearl necklace hanging from her wrist. So what I'm doing first is I'm going in with that needle and thread right above her wrist and adding one bead. And while I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I'm leaving string on both ends of that pearl. Now I obviously need to make it look like this pearl strand is hanging from behind her wrist. So you can see here I'm taking one of those needles and I'm poking the hole right beneath her wrist from the front but I'm just making the hole so that I can come back from the back side. And that's just so I'm not making any unnecessary holes. But once I have the strand of thread up through the backside, I'm going to add on a ton of pearls. Once I was happy with the length of the first side, then I'm going to start working on that second side. And I want it to look like the pearls are sitting in her hand and then draping over her pinky finger. So now I'm going to start adding some pearls to the other side of the string. And once those pearls reach her pinky finger, I'm going to put another hole through the front of there to go to the back. Then I'll pull that all the way through and set the beads back in place. 
Then right beneath her pinky finger, I'm again going to make a hole through the front, but I'm actually going to come through the back, just using that hole as a guide to bring the string under her pinky. And then I'll continue adding some more pearls all the way down until I reach the other side. And once I had enough pearls on there, then right there at the bottom, I just tied these two pieces together and cut the string. Now I did end up adding an extra stitch right in the center of her palm to kind of make it look like the pearls were being cupped in her hand. And finally, I sewed one single pearl onto the top of the oyster. For this next project, I wanted to make some well bookends. So I grabbed a big clump of my clay and I'm gonna start by making the well's head first. So first I warmed up that clay in my hand to make it moldable and then you can see I'm just kind of pressing and pushing this clay until I get the general shape of a well head. And I wanna make sure that the bottom is flat and that backside that's gonna be against the books is flat flat as well. So I just kept messing with it until I was completely happy with it. Then I grabbed an ink pen and I'm just using the lid part of that to make his eyes on both sides of his head. And for his mouth, I just grabbed a craft stick and I started pressing down to make the general shape of his mouth all the way around his head. And then once I had the general shape done, then I was able to go back in and really press down to get that shape more defined. Then moving on to the backside of the well, I just grabbed another clump of my air dry clay. And again, I'm just warming that up and kind of squishing it and squeezing it. And and then I started by making his tail first. So I squeezed that out and then there at the end, I snipped his tail fins with some scissors so that I could shape those into two individual pieces. And then I just kind of continued shaping his tail a little bit before moving on to his body. And when I was doing this, again, I wanted to make the bottom and the front side really flat so that it would sit well and then sit against the books well. And once I was happy with the backside, then I just grabbed a little cup of water and I'm using my finger to kind of rub out any cracks or imperfections in the clay before letting this set for about two days, I think it took for it to dry. For this final project, I'm just using a scrap piece of 2x4 that I had and I just used my miter box saw to cut those ends at an angle to make this look like a boat so that I can make a little sailboat with this piece. I'm also going to be using this chunky dowel rod. Now I got these from Amazon in a large pack but you can find these at the craft store or Walmart as well. Now for both of these pieces, I'm mixing up some gray and warm beige and also a little bit of burnt umber and I'm going in with a wet paintbrush and painting over both of these pieces and then I wiped off the excess with my paper towel and once that was dry, I went back in and dry brushed a little bit more of that warm buff color. Then I used my drill in a large drill bit to drill down into the 2x4 piece. I didn't go all the way down but I went far enough down to where I could just add some wood glue and then my dowel rod would fit snugly inside there. For the actual cell for the sailboat I'm using a Dollar Tree doily and here I'm just cutting that down at an angle so that I can add this onto my boat. I did end up having to trim this down a little bit more as 
my boat was just a bit shorter than the doily, but once I had it all cut down, I grabbed these eye hooks that I got from Amazon and some of this Dollar Tree string, and I added an eye hook to the end of the sailboat, and then I added one to the top of the little dowel rod, and then two more right in the center and the bottom of the dowel rod. And this is actually how I'm going to attach the doily to the sailboat. So I grabbed some of that string and just found spots in the doily that were still connected and not cut through to put that string through. And then I tied the doily to all of those eye hooks. And that was it for this sailboat. I hope you all enjoyed today's projects. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.